Just an upfront warning. This video has spoilers for the module Last Orders of the Yawning Portal, the epic I ran for a convention. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, on to the video. A while back I was running a Dungeon Dragons epic for a convention, so you can have large sizes of players like 20, 30, 40, 50 people. The story takes place in Undermountain, which is a dungeon so massive it's like an entire continent with its own cities, towns, and regions, run by Halaster Blackcloak, the Mad Mage. Many who venture into its dark halls never return, or if they do, they come back fabulously rich or changed in some way. It's been said that many have dreams or feel a call into its mysterious depths, lured by its promise of wealth and riches. One adventurer, Durnan, traveled across Undermountain in his younger days, returning with his spoils to make a tavern over one of its entrances called the Yawning Portal. The game takes place at the seedy tavern, the Growling Grog House within Undermountain. All the players were down there because Durnan had gone missing and hadn't returned. The game had a very interesting mechanic that I really liked. You start out by handing all of your players a sheet with a list of characters that they can talk to in it. The players were trying to uncover as many clues as they could that could help them figure out what had happened to Durnan. Each table was given so much material to do that it's impossible for any one group to complete everything. Instead, they have to complete as much as they can and trade clues with each of the other tables. Before the session began, we had a DM meeting, going over what was going to be happening and discussing the game in order to make sure that we were all on the same page. But there was one thing that I wasn't a huge fan of. The game was actually semi-competitive. Whenever a player collected a clue or completed a thing, the table kept track of their score. At the end of the game, whatever table got the most points was the winner. Hooray! I mean, if we won, everyone's a winner. But one table was more winner than the others. Ugh, I said to myself, this is gonna suck. If the players and DMs are now competing with each other to get this high score, you're going to have tables who don't roleplay, blitzing through the material just to get some kind of a prize. I think it'd be better if most tables just ignore it, which most probably are. You know what? I'm going to be running my table extra slow, dial down the speed so we're out of the running just to be sure. We're going to have a great night, even if, even if we don't win some stupid prize? <laughs> Man, I'd hate to be at the, the table that won, that's for sure. Getting into the actual game, the adventure was very off the wall. It involved a lot of ridiculous missions like playing poker against a beholder, challenging some guy to a fight in a fighting ring, helping someone write a poem, and so on. After the players had found a certain number of clues, there were missions in the tavern that opened up by table, at my table, the mission was, Oh no! There's been a terrible problem! The tap has been stopped up! If someone doesn't unclog the pipe, everyone in the tavern will quickly become sober! Oh, oh no! no! The players quickly rushed into a room where there was a cavernous industrial-sized vat of ale which went down so far you couldn't see the bottom. They were all given potions of ale breathing. <gasps> Did we unlock a new magic item? Yes. Don't write that on your sheets! For those of you who don't get this, in Adventures League, players used to receive treasure points and unlocks. If they find a magic item, they can earn an unlock and use the treasure points to purchase it. So if the players find a Dragon's Horde, they actually tell the DM what magic items they find in it. Technically, yes, it is an unlock, but when are the players ever going to use a potion of ale breathing other than at this very particular moment in time? Man, I'm gonna be so pissed off if this becomes a major plot point later. So, the players plumbed the depths of this tank, which had its own ale mermaids and an alcohol kelp forest. It truly was a magical wonderland. But deep down, they encountered what was causing the problem. A booze kraken! Yes, a booze kraken! And they knew the only way to start the tap again was to defeat it. Alright guys, let's... Get kraken. Hmm, okay, well then, so the Kraken grabs you, and drags you down, and no one comes to help you, and you're hideously killed, and your lifeless body is never seen again, and everyone's okay with this. You know what, that's not fair, this is ale. You know what, the uh, Kraken comes in, uh, kills the player, drags you off, and uh, just leaves the character. Kill the player instead. But I'm still here. I meant you're dead to us metaphorically. After that mission, my table did another when a portal opened up. Hey man, we just got a portal open over to the Fey. There's a really happening party going on downstairs. That's where it's at, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, and the players went through the portal into the Fey party and ran into several Eladrin. What you looking at, boy? You looking at me? I said you looking at me? Back off, man, they're not worth it. 
Sweet Blossom. No, no, dear and Tulips! You guys think you can just roll in here from this side of the glade, be disrespected by home circle? We're from the meadows! We don't take nothing from nobody! You wanna go? The monk punched the Eladrin once, and he went down crying, sobbing in a pool of his own tears. They also encountered several fairies, were locked in a mortal dance-off, and whoever could do the best booty shake would win! Who could best the fairies? Who had the power to get jiggy with it? Stepping forward was the bard, rising to the challenge. Finally, my moment has arrived! I always knew this day would come! I told you, Dad, you are wrong! Now it's time for me to dance to save my friends! Son, you're a disappointment to the family, and you always will be. But those were just what the lower level tables were doing. The tier 4 table had players of 17th and higher levels. In their adventure, they enter into a bowling alley, and who shows up but none other than the elderly, frail wizard, Halastair, Black Cloak. They must compete with him in a bowling match, or else become trapped as slaves in the Undermountain. Halastair takes one of his withered, shaking hands, picks up a bowling ball, and very easily chucks his ball down the alley, getting an immediate strike. It turns out, he doesn't use magic to bowl. He doesn't have to. I've been bowling for over 800 years, challenging the greatest bowlers across the multiverse. I'm the 537th undefeated undermounted bowling champion, known as the human wrecking ball. <laughs> you know, funny thing, I didn't actually find out what had happened to those players after that. They're fine, probably. Eventually, after all the adventures and missions, the players discovered that there was a dragon who had captured Durnan and was attempting to enter into this reality, and we had to fight him to rescue the barkeep. Us DMs had had a conversation about this dragon beforehand. I mean, this dragon fight is so stacked against the players, it's not even funny. First, they get teleported into a swamp on a small island, which conveniently is just small enough to get all the players in the dragon's acid breath. They initially get jumped by shambling mounds, which eat the players' reactions and spells, once they're spent, the dragon then decides to shell up, flying out of the player's reach and firing breath attacks. If the players try to leave the island into the mud, it's considered extra difficult terrain, which I didn't even know was a thing, which means that it costs triple to move through it. So there's 30 feet of move only goes for about 10 feet now. So what that basically means is they're not going anywhere. By the way, even if they do, they get attacked by leeches anyway. So, you know, it's a tough fight. Eventually, the players won, the day was saved, and the adventure came to its thrilling conclusion. So, finally, they come to the closing announcements. We're telling up the final scores for who collected the most points. Most got about four. Out of the 15 tables we had, one table, who will remain nameless, collected one point. Ugh, we really got stuck, guys. A few of you got two or three. Yay! One got six. But the winner, with the most points, the runaway leader with nine points. Yes, an amazing nine points. Please give a warm round of applause to... Ben's Table. Yes, Ben's Table, who scored far and away the most points. Hooray for Ben's Table. To which my response was, Oh my god, I must have made a horrible, horrible mistake somewhere. Maybe, maybe I did the math wrong or something. And I started panically going through my notes and adding up numbers. Nope, they were all right. The other players actually helped me keep track of the numbers and keep their own totals so we could actually confirm that it was correct. Afterwards, the other DMs and moderators were talking to me and brought up that they were actually really surprised their table collected as many victory points as we did. I just laughed it off, and I didn't tell them this, but we completed even more material that didn't get written down. So each table unlocks their own personal mission, and if you have enough time, you can actually complete another table's mission. So not only did we collect nine victory points and complete our own personal mission, we also did another table's mission as well, which I didn't tell them about. It doesn't matter, d and not a contest, unless I'm winning, in which case it totally matters. Even though, here's the thing, I really believed I was wasting a lot of time doing bookkeeping stuff and having to reread material. I even did little things, like I brought out poker chips and we played poker. Like, I genuinely thought I was going slow. But also, that raised the question, why? Was it my players? Was it me? It had to be me, right? I mean, a lot of the players didn't even know each other, and all the tables were set up randomly. A few did. And I did hear from some of the other tables that some of the groups got deadlocked because many of the players wouldn't help each other with their objectives, but ours kind of really worked together and really wanted to complete a lot of stuff, and so they... I think maybe that was, it was partly because of that, but 
it's it's probably partially also because of me, maybe. I don't know. If it was me, like, is that a good thing? Like, because I got thinking about this afterwards. Like, did the other tables have some kind of gripping narrative that we missed out on? Like, if I took 10 minutes to do something and the other table took 30 minutes to do that thing, like, did, did they have more fun? Like, there was did they go, like, really in-depth with, with what was going on? Although I'm pretty sure my players cheesed a few of the encounters. Like, one of the enemies is a lich, which you're supposed to get rid of. He's supposed to leave the tavern. And my table just kind of picked him up and threw him down a flat of stairs. And that's how they got rid of him. Uh, I don't know exactly how the other tables handled that encounter, but I'm just going to go out on a limb here and just assume it was probably a lot tougher for them. I think it was also interesting because I always kind of suspected that I was a little bit of an air quotes fast GM that didn't like to linger in scenes too long, but this kind of cemented it a bit more for me. I guess it's also because I, I just don't like it when players get stuck for too long. I can kind of tell when about half of the table is starting to check out of a scene, and I usually try to move things on to something else around that time. But other times I'm thinking to myself, like, one of the clues you get is asking some guy about a song. Like, that's like 10 minutes of material at most. How do you stretch that out for an hour of material? I mean, is it, like, I like to role play, but I also like to, you know, move the story along. Like, wouldn't you get bored just chatting to characters in character for hours? I, I don't know. So that brings me back to my original question. Was it a good thing that our table went the fastest? And for the life of me, I can't tell you. I have no clue. Might have even been a bad thing. But if it was a bad thing, like, how many victory points would have been the best? Like, is there some kind of Goldilocks pace? Five? Four? I guess you could say it varies from group to group, which, I, that's not really a satisfying answer. But maybe that's the correct one, I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, the most fun table to be at was the one who only got one. <laughs>